Now we do have one more poet before we've got a little bit of a break. Um, Kieran, the bartender, is he still there? Hello, Kieran. That's Kieran, the bartender, everybody. His name is Kieran, I asked. Hello. Um, so the next poet is come all the way from uh, Paynton. He hosts a, an evening called Speaky Blinders on a street I used to live on once upon a time. I uh, give you Jason Disley. Uh, I'm going to um, read a few words from a new little book that I've uh, got coming out. Uh, it's called Beat to a Pulp. And uh, I like pulp fiction, I like film noir, and so I've written a collection that's inspired by that, so. This is called Introducing Ruby. <laughs> Ruby was her name. She... She wore a ruby-coloured dress. Her mouth was ruby-red too. At first you would think she was a whoopee mama, a sweet piece from a notch house. But when she eyeballs you, you pay the price. Oh, she ain't no mud kicker, if that's what you're thinking. Let that sink in. She uses her noodle while you stand there with moose eyes. Her moss is most monster, all raven and long. Her own eyes are midnight blue. But Ruby is her name. She would sooner scratch your vein if you don't play it her way. She and Jack Rabbit Blood are from the same side of the tracks. Have each other's backs. For now, her favourite colour is red. Funny that, with a name like Ruby. This one's called uh, Saw the Light of Day. The jalopy trundled towards the city's outer limits. Johnny on the spot had decided he'd had his lot. Not wanting a gab fest, the mint juleps had got him sourced. The jive with the jazz baby had twisted his melon. Jack Rabbit Blood was after him and that was no good. He wasn't ready to go to Marble City yet and go on a deep six holiday. The hot rod had burned rubber and scattered gravel like a sea wave spray on a choppy dawn. It was enough to fracture your toupee. You know, go crazy. The finger was pointing and the arrow was aimed. The crosshairs crossed. The goof, the foul up. Why gouge a piece of change? Why be a Monday morning quarterback talking trash? Him and his big mouth. The roll of the dice was not good now that Jack Rabbit Blood was the new hood in the city. The time was when you put polish on the furniture and get wise to this bluesy groove. The table had to be turned and the stakes were climbing a steep staircase. Where was Ruby now? Where was Ruby now? Things were changing and so was the night when Johnny on the spot saw the light of day. This is called The Foul Up. It happened four days ago. Johnny on the spot took his chance. He was looking for something to grease his romance. She was a doll, a diamond. Actually, she was a ruby. The sleekest, most aerodynamic class act he had ever seen. She was his living dream. Cherubic darts had splintered his pump. You know that thing that happens to saps? Yeah, love. Love at first. You know when he eyeballed her getting into that louse machine with someone else? The red gown, the raven hair, the fur, the bow-shaped kisser. Oh, how he wanted to kiss her. Smitten by the red-hot kitten, he knew he had to score big and, and he had to find a scam to rig. He wasn't called Johnny on the spot for nothing. His mind worked faster than birds' fingers at the royal roost. Improvising like a horn player, he thought of a grift for some greenbacks. He had to make out like a foreign loan, do well, so she would be his main squeeze. Little did he know the money he was to make belonged to another. So without really interviewing his brains, he entered a drugstore on 52nd. The back room had a table. 
Four men playing five card stud. Chill your chat, he said. One pulled a gat. His own iron barked like a wolf. Claret ran down the knave of hearts. The ace, the king and the queen came tumbling after. He scooped the greens and went to do a Houdini. The trunk by the desk stared in his direction without objection. It allowed itself to, make, to do an equally impressive vanishing act. Back to the room at the flop house, he opened the trunk. When he saw it, he got flippy, for he once thought, for once he thought he'd definitely been at the right spot. He laughed, for he truly was Johnny on the spot. Only Jack Rabbit Blood understood the foul up. The drugstore cowboy had seen it all. The stool pigeon sang whilst birds still played. I remember you. This is the devil in the details. It's about the hard-boiled detective. Aldous Beach has a long reach. He is the dick that hunts, that snuffs out, sniffs out those that belong in the cackle factory. The wise guys, hoodlums and hell-bent hatchet men. Doing the graveyard shift, he landed at a place on 52nd. The claret stained the joint. Whoever pushed the cats had drilled their vest. An ice man for sure, one that was not going to evade Beach's law. Questions were rising in this gambling den. Those questions would be answered, the who, the why and the when. He just needed someone to pull a Judas. He flicked his cigarette into the spilled claret. It sighed and turned black as he headed back to the street. Replacing his hat, Moving his feet towards the door, as he did, he saw the scratches on the floor. Yes, fresh as a daisy, wood gouges, clear as day. Something heavy had been pulled this way. The devil is in the details, and he would find his imp. Some snivelling stool pigeon, a person on the make, someone trying to avoid wearing a concrete overcoat in a lake. Now we come on to uh, Jack Rabbit Blood, the, the main villain of the piece. Slated for Crashville. That colour that isn't white or yellow, but the shade between, hovered in the night sky, hooked on t sentinel poles, lining the road ahead, shedding illumination in a crescent beneath, removing shadows and spectres of fear in an orbit of light. Jack Rabbit Blood was more than frustrated at what had gone down. Four of his men were now pushing daisies. The trunk had gone, the trunk had gone, his trunk had gone. His walk in the night hitting the bricks down through the street, obliterating crescents with his bulk and wrath, the menace charging through him. He will find the hatchet man. He will find this chiller. He will hand it to them. Give them the heebie-jeebies first. This no good hood. Yes, Jack Rabbit was after his blood. The mystery man was slated for Crashville. Yes, siree. He was modernistic enough to know that the clown will be flashing it around. Now he had more dough than an army baker. He just had to wait for someone to motivate their pie chopper and make the headlines. Ruby always made an entrance. She was used to walking into a place and having 20 or so guys going all moose-eyed. It was the power that she had. She could turn a nice guy bad. She was wise to that. She was like a star from the silver screen. She was in many a man's dream, but she had no interest in the small timers, the nickel men. You had to be someone wearing the right vines. From head to toe, you had to be so sharp that she would take notice. You had to be Major League, a cat so clean that you too could have been on the very same silver screen. Johnny on the spot decided to give it his best shot. Head to toe in a chalk striped cashmere suit, handmade shoes, silk shirt and tie, a diamond pin, chamois leather gloves and a crystal topped cane. He felt he was the man in the main feature. 
He had turned himself into an immaculate creature. Bespoken to his own ideas, he had walked into the club with evaporating fears, feeling tall and proud. He too drew the eyeballs of the herd. There wasn't a man in there who could compete with a man turned out so neat. He sat at a table near the stage, nonchalantly looking at a menu's page. The jazz musicians papa pa and the drummer brushed the skins. Ivories kept time, moving along a monochrome line. Ruby had the voice of a bird, a warbler of natural distinction. She was as silky as Johnny's threads. Now in the club, there was the pair of them turning heads. Johnny was at the right spot again. Ruby sat, sat at Johnny's table. He was feeling very able. His confidence fortified by the top quality hooch in fine cut glasses. Naturally, Ruby was drinking something red from a chateau, no doubt. She lit a cigarette and smiled impishly at Johnny's conversation. He was a charmer, a rough diamond and sharper than a tack. The get down was what she needed. He planted ideas that were new and had to be heeded. She eyeballed him squarely across the snow white linen and said, in my book, you're way upstairs. Johnny on the spot felt high and fly and too wet to dry. He was elevated. He definitely had a fair shake at winning this dame. Things were cooking and there was only one thing that could blow this and chew the scenery, Mr. Jack Rabbit Blood. He was all sharped up. Blood was as busy as a one-legged tap dancer. He would blot him out when the chance arises, but for now, looking at Ruby, he was all steamed up like a tra trouser presser. Yeah, all steamed up like a trouser presser. Let's cut this scene, dollface, and go driving. Thank you.